The place, Adelaide, Australia. The day, Friday. The man, Elon Musk. The plan, SpaceX. The result, a big f***ing deal. A few weeks ago I did a video that compared the SpaceX Mars plan to NASA's Mars plan, and in it I mentioned this. Actually, Elon is going to be speaking at the International Astronautical Conference in Australia later this month, where he's going to address some of these changes and reveal their revised plan. Well, that happened on Friday, and if you think I'm not going to talk about it, <laughs> you don't know me. On Friday, Elon took the stage at the International Astronautical Conference in Adelaide, Australia, and around the world, musketeers gathered around their computer screens to watch their favorite billionaire visionary slash chief executive stammerer talk about his updated plans for Mars. Um, but one that can serve, that w w where the, the one that can... But that's not really what they got. Yes, Elon talked about Mars, but this wasn't really about Mars so much as it is about the future of SpaceX. And the first hint about the future of SpaceX is the name he used for their rocket. Last year, the spaceship that he presented was called the ITS, which stood for Interplanetary Transport System. This was a rocket specifically designed for voyages to Mars and beyond. But this time, the letters ITS were never used. This time, he went with the letters BFR, which stands for Big F***ing Rocket. Okay, can you imagine NASA introducing the Saturn V that way? I stand before you here today to tell you that we are going to the moon on that big fucking rocket. But jokes aside, this really does speak to a very major change for SpaceX and the BFR. One that addresses a problem that I may have talked about in my last video. The big flaw in SpaceX's plan was that there wasn't really any commercial value to the Mars missions. Even if they're charging $200,000 a ticket, that's not going to get anywhere near the tens of billions of dollars that it's going to cost to develop this machine. And that's what Friday's talk was really all about. Musk's new version of the BFR gets smaller, but way, way more versatile. We already knew that they had decided to scale down from the 12 meter wide version originally to a 9 meter wide, something else I talked about in the last video. Also, it looks like the diameter of the ITS has gone from 12 meters down to 9 meters. Man, I'm good at this. But what that wound up meaning was a rocket that does far more than one thing. This isn't just a rocket to get to Mars. This is a rocket that does it all. Satellite deployment, refueling, lunar missions, and shuttling astronauts to the ISS. And as you can see in this picture, it's still a pretty big f***ing rocket. This is the future of SpaceX. A one-size-fits-all workhorse that can perform a variety of functions with just slight modifications to the original design. In fact, he said that this design would make everything before it obsolete, which makes me wonder about the future of the Falcon Heavy and the Dragon 2. He talked a little bit about how much more difficult the Falcon Heavy was to implement than he thought it would be, and they're still planning on doing some tests on it at the end of this year, but I get the feeling that he's kind of decided to just get this out of his life by leapfrogging over it to the BFR. This workhorse has 31 engines in the first stage as opposed to 42 in the original design, and it's designed to carry 4,400 tons of vehicle mass with 5,400 tons of thrust. And he showed in a chart just how much more that is than any other rocket in the world, including the Falcon Heavy, and by a long shot. So maybe the Falcon Heavy will just be kept around for certain special payloads that require it? I don't know. But the second stage had a few major design changes, including a delta wing for better pitch and yaw control during re-entry. And they changed up their refueling procedure, where instead of making sweet, sweet love, they kind of connect on the, the back ends. You know, so they... I don't know what you call that. So it basically uses the same connections that connect the second stage to the booster and use that to push fuel from the tanker into the cruise ship. And he described the cruise ship as a combination of the Falcon 9 second stage and the Dragon capsule, but bigger. And with this configuration, they can make the entire rocket reusable. Now, with all the fuss that's been made about the boosters being able to re-land on a regular basis, a lot of people don't realize that there is actually a second stage of the Falcon 9 that's completely expendable. It burns up back in the atmosphere. So when Musk shows a chart that shows the BFR is the most cost-effective rocket ever made, Made, that's why, because the whole thing is completely reusable. And when the entire rocket is reusable, all you're paying for is fuel and maintenance. And when all you're paying for is fuel, you can make a lot more money per flight. And that is how they pay for this thing. The crew cabin is designed to carry up to 100 passengers with 40 capsules that Elon says are built for two to three people each, though you could get five in there if you weren't claustrophobic. And he says it has as much cabin space as an Airbus 380, which just for reference can carry 853 passengers fully loaded. One thing that was new was he talked about lunar expeditions and possibly setting up a moon base, which is new for SpaceX, but in line with NASA's plan to return to the moon. And this obviously positions SpaceX to be able to get government contracts to go to the moon, which is another way that the BFR can make some money. And back to Mars, he showed a visualization of how the Mars land landing would work, using that delta wing shape to slow the craft down in the atmosphere before doing a propulsive landing. Now, I did say that the Mars missions would need to produce their own fuel there on Mars, which in rocket speak is called in-situ resource utilization. And I was curious how this worked, so I looked into it, and it basically works like this. It starts with carbon dioxide and water. 
Now Mars' atmosphere is very thin, but it's got a whole lot of carbon dioxide in it, and there's no flowing water on the surface of Mars, but apparently there is a lot of ice water on Mars. In fact, some NASA scientists have said that one area of Mars has a collection of ice water that's as large as Lake Superior. So what you do is you take the water and you divide it into hydrogen and oxygen, which is really simple to do with electrolysis, and then you take the hydrogen and the CO2 and you combine that to make methane in what's called the Sabatier process. This is an exothermic reaction which involves heating the hydrogen and the CO2 to 300 to 400 degrees Celsius with a catalyst like nickel or ruthenium on aluminum oxide. So you've got the oxygen from the electrolysis and the methane from the Sabatier process, and this is exactly what powers the Raptor engines. And that's how you get home. Elon's new timeline puts the first trips to the moon in 2022, with two uncrewed missions that will provide the plants that will produce the fuel and other resources for the manned missions that will come later. In 2024, he wants to launch four ships, two of them crewed, two uncrewed, the uncrewed ones carrying lots of supplies for a long trip on Mars. And he showed how a base would start, with one landing pad, then becoming multiple landing pads, and a city growing out from there. Now, Elon himself called these timelines aspirational, but he did say that they're already beginning work on the BFR, so you don't know. We might I'd see these sooner than we think. Yeah, I know. Now, of course, there's a mountain of barriers to actually living and colonizing Mars, including cosmic rays and sun rays and the lack of oxygen and all that kind of stuff. Though it's all for a future video, though. But the big surprise of the night came when Elon channeled his inner Steve Jobs and had one more thing. And that one more thing was when he asked if we could take this ship to Mars, why couldn't we take it to other places on Earth? And he unveiled this plan. It would ferry people to a floating launch pad and then launch them to the other side of the world at 27,000 miles per hour, where it would propulsively land less than 30 minutes later. Basically making long distance trips as much of a time cost as commuting in bad traffic. And now in order for this to ever be a thing, of course, they have to completely perfect the propulsive landing thing. And he did tout the fact that they've landed 16 in a row perfectly, which is great. And he actually said that it's getting so perfected that in the future versions, they won't even need legs anymore. They'll be able to land the rocket on their mounts, which it looks like the BFR is designed to do. I'm not sure if NASA would go along with this idea actually because they did put the kibosh on the propulsive landing of the Dragon 2 and insisted on going with the splashdown and I'm not sure if the FAA would have to get involved with this if it was commercial travel. I don't know. This is new territory. And it did give me some deja vu about the Hyperloop. Of course there's much more detail in the presentation itself which I'll link right here but what do you think? Do you think this is a better plan than the last one? Do you think it'll never get off the ground? Tell us why in the comments. I think for one that making it more versatile to pay for itself is a really smart idea and that's something I've always admired Elon Musk for is his ability to enact change through capitalism. Now I do have some problems with the capitalist system in general, especially unchecked capitalism, but it, the fact of the matter is it's kind of what runs the world today and he's using it to enact change in our species and I just think that's really cool. Say what you will about the man, that's cool. You know what else is cool? The <laughs> shirt. Tell me you saw the shirt. This is just one of the shirts available at answerswithjoe.com slash shirts. I'll put a link right here. If you are an Elon Musk fan, this is just one of many shirts that are gonna give you a nice tingly sensation. If you didn't already know, I have partnered with a guy named Michal from sfsf.shop. He's this amazing designer from Prague. He designed this shirt and a whole bunch of others, and he's making them available for the Answers with Joe community. And uh, so go buy one if you like them, they're really cool. And you're not sending your money to some faceless corporation somewhere, you're actually helping out a very talented young man starting up a business. So it's a win-win for everybody. And speaking of a talented young man trying to get a business off the ground, this is brought to you by Canker Boy. <laughs> if you have canker sores that occur on a regular basis more than once a month, this is a vitamin supplement that helps prevent them. And it works. Just go to cankerboy.com, try one out for yourself. You got a one month risk free trial. And I also want to take a second to thank all of my sponsors on Patreon. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. It's just, it's growing like crazy right now, and it's all because of you guys. And I want to call out my newest people. Here we go. We got Zach, Jack Vermillion, I Make Big Boom, awesome name, uh, Tiki Tack, Robin Swilly, Chaz. Uh, Joshua Mayer, Darren Nolan, there's a lot of them this week, uh, Andrew Ladelf, Ted Oravec, Lee Wood, Michael Weglinski, and actually one just came in from Hugh Thomas. Thank you all for joining. If you would like to join those guys, get some nice perks and some behind the scenes cool stuff, you can go to patreon.com slash answers with Joe. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Like and share if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, I invite you to check out this video or any of the others with a nice blue background. And uh, if you like those, please do subscribe because I just keep making these videos and they come out every Monday. All right, thanks again for watching. You guys go out and have an eye-opening week and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys, take care.